Paul Gatling with the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal. Glad to have you with us. I'm joined today by Dr. Janine Perry. She's a professor of political science at the University of Arkansas. Good to have you with us. It's nice to be here. This is a wonderful time of year for you, I would imagine. Not just because it's election season, but because this is the time of year when the Arkansas poll comes out. I think it came out November 1st, just a few days ago. Uh, you've been doing that for what? Well, you're director of the poll, obviously, for what, 20 years? Yes, I'm its founding director. We started in 1999, mm -hmm. and we've been doing it annually since that time. So this year, that actually means with a few kind of extra big years in there, we're up to more than 17,000 interviews mm. uh, over the 20-year period. Um, and typically, you know, we're asking 50 to 60 questions. So that's a lot of folks volunteering a lot of time. Right. And that's all telephone, not just automated things that you do. Those are telephone it survey is. interviews. We do it the hard way. We do it the expensive way. But it's also a way that's gotten us good information right. over you, the years. You do it the thorough way. That's <laughs> right. All right. Well, what is the Arkansas Poll? Just a, just a quick methodology. Who did you talk to to get these results? What are some numbers? Like 1,200 surveys you did? Yeah. We actually did an oversample this year in northwest Arkansas. But generally speaking, what people will find in the report is the 800 that we typically survey statewide. It's uh, intended to be a random sample of Arkansas adults. Um, we do ask at the end if they're, uh, how likely they are to vote in the upcoming election, and we can restrict our respondents to just that number. So from that 800, it's usually around 620, 650 or so. Uh, but even without that, um, our election prediction numbers are pretty good because the people most likely to respond to a poll also have higher income and higher education, meaning they look a lot like voters. Right, and that's a point of pride. I'm sure you can <laughs> mirror that election results you like. I'm sure you're, you're uh, anxious for election day to see how close you are. All right, oh, so you, I always feel slightly sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so you've got questions about diversity, politics, policy, current events. You want to find out what Arkansans are thinking about a lot of different topics. So tell us, what are we thinking? What are the key takeaways <laughs> this year? Well, we have um, some questions that we ask year over year, or at least most questions. We have a handful of questions we've asked every year. Right. And then we try to rotate in questions that might be of interest just out in the public. Um, increasingly, we've been rotating in questions that are also of research interest to scholars at the University of Arkansas campus. Uh, and those are more things that we ask maybe just once or twice um, just, uh, uh, just to get the results mm -hmm. for that particular year. So this year we have approval ratings, we have most important problem, we always have some version of that, we have partisanship ideology, we have um, gun regulation broadly speaking, abortion regulation broadly speaking, some climate change questions, and then we have some special batteries. There was one uh, on abortion opinion that's been so much in the news, even more than usual, and we have an amazing researcher at the university looking at, at those opinions and predictors of those opinions. And then this year, because of our partnership uh, with the Northwest Arkansas Council and Engage Arkansas, we also did some stuff on diversity in the workplace and how people, and general community, and how people perceive that. So I would say those are the, those are the major uh, categories this year. All right, well, you mentioned you, you have some questions that have been here through every poll. What, what's a question maybe that you look for first when you get the results back? Is there something that you look to immediately, yes. page you flip to? <laughs> I always look at partisanship uh -huh. because I think it's so interesting that um, uh, by some measures the third most thoroughly democratic state uh, as recently as 2008 became about the 10th most Republican state right. in a six year period. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's so interesting. Uh, and the fact that even before that, that Arkansas um, voters were swinging back and forth. We had independents who were um, ticket splitting before ticket splitting was cool, mm -hmm. you know, going all the way back to the 19, 1960s. So I tend to look at that first. Right, and I would imagine there were no surprises in the partisanship questions this Not year. Not so much this year, except that the change, we asked two questions. Two questions. The first one is just a gateway question. Generally speaking, do you think of yourself as a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, or what? And for a long time, of course, the Democrats were in the lead, and then the Independents, and then the Republicans. And then around 2010, right, when election outcomes mm -hmm. started to shift, that started to shift, but it was really modest. It was really subtle. Uh, this year, however, the subtlety has been increasing and increasing, and now we're at 32% of that gateway question saying they see themselves as Republican. And ever so slightly, that's an all-time 20-year high since we've been recording it, uh, and certainly higher than people who'd run polls in the past. And then what's even more fun is if you take the independents, who are such a large portion of the Arkansas electorate and long have been, they also have been shifting to the right. They've pulled back a little bit the last two polls that we've taken, uh, but still it's something like 43% of independence will tell you on a second slice that they lean to the right. So we're starting to see the Arkansas electorate 
say that it is the way that it votes, right. and that was something I've been waiting for. Interesting. All right. Well, so one of the main cons one of the main takeaways that I saw is that most Arkansans are concerned most with health care mm -hmm. this year. It's generally, you know, the economy or jobs or those things are at the top of the line. But this year, I think it was twenty three percent were concerned most about health care. What do you think is driving that? Why do you think that? Was? Well, I want to be a little bit careful and kind of a nerd here. It just barely <laughs> edges out um, the second issue, uh, and then the, the third issue isn't isn't too far behind. Right, you have health care and drugs, and I think it was... Yes, uh, but I, I think it's telling that health care has been in the top three for most of the 20 years that we've asked about the most important problem or issue in Arkansas today. And then I think it might even be more important that drugs are right up there with it because drugs actually came onto the scene organically, I guess you might say, as a problem or issue. Because in odd-numbered years, we ask people the open-ended question, and we write down what they say, and then we categorize it after the fact. So in other words, we're not predetermining that these are the six issues. You must choose among them. Right. We don't do that in odd-numbered years, but that's expensive because it's time-consuming. So in even-numbered years, we take last year's top six, and that's how drugs got on here. Last year, they appeared suddenly, and this year they're on there again competing with general health care. And I think that says something about... Um, Arkansans' awareness of the national experience, what, 72,000 deaths mm -hmm. last year from opioids. Um, we have a lot of rural people, a lot of poor people. It seems to be particularly an epidemic in those, in those populations. So I think you're seeing reflected there what people are really concerned about. Okay. Go to your numbers now about uh, some current issues. Attitudes are changing, or they seem to be changing on abortion, gun mm -hmm. rights, gay rights. Those numbers really kind of went the opposite direction this year in, in all three of those categories. Why do you think that is? Imagine our Kansans doing one thing and then the other. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> We've done that before. Uh -huh. um, yes, uh, those are subtle changes, but they are outside the margin of error. So on the one hand, we talked about how this um, electorate appears to be slightly more Republican than we've seen in our 20-year history. And also, I didn't add this, but um, consistently more conservative than they were, say, 20 years ago. And of course, election outcomes in recent election cycles have been bearing that out. On the other hand, we saw the uh, lowest percentage we've seen yet for stricter abortion regulations, mm -hmm. and we saw the highest percentage we've seen yet for stricter gun regulations. Right. Um, we saw a high, a double-digit increase in the percentage of people who think climate change is something that uh, is a problem in their lifetime. Uh, and of course, we saw what we've seen really for years, which is a liberalization of attitudes toward gays and lesbians. So it, it's a little hard to reconcile those things. Right. But those it's aren't not conservative a, answers to the conservative mm -hmm. demographic that you're reflecting. It's not. Right. But I think it says a lot about what blunt instruments elections are. You know, you got. Brand A and Brand B, and that's important. Most political scientists will tell you that shorthand is what people need to make choices, that we're, we do best when we decide on teams. On the other hand, the real policy preferences of actual people, of actual voters, uh, is a lot more purple than just a strictly red or blue, and that's borne out here. Right. Okay. And again, let's go back to this oversample of just Northwest Arkansas respondents in mm -hmm. Benton and Washington counties. I think about 520 mm -hmm. surveys that you did there. Uh, wh why did you Why did you do that? You said mm -hmm. I think you said you'd done that maybe 10 years or so ago. But why did you decide to do that this year? We did for our 10 year anniversary. We did an oversample. We had the money to do an mm -hmm. oversample of. Um, we ended up doing 1,600 total, so that gave us 400 in each of the U.S. House districts, and that was really exciting and fun to do. And uh, your, um, your, your viewers can, can find that um, online, everything we do. That's the thing about the Arkansas poll. It's all available. Mm -hmm. um, but this year, uh, the Northwest Arkansas Council and I and Engage Arkansas had been talking about maybe trying to get a, a baseline measure since Northwest Arkansas is changing so rapidly. Arkansas is too, but Northwest Arkansas is really, really changing, uh, you know, demographically, uh, economically, all kinds of things, you know, really into a metro area. And they knew I'd been doing this for a while, and they said, well, is there any way we could partner? So we did. We just basically made them a writer on the Arkansas poll, uh, but they provided the funding to do this over sample of just Washington and Benton counties. And we didn't run all the questions that we were running statewide on the Benton and Washington County poll and then vice versa. But this group of 10 questions that we developed together about diversity and community and the changing workforce were ones we were able to partner on and it was really an exciting opportunity. Right, and what did that tell you? What were some of the key takeaways when you drill down into the, the NWA-centric numbers? Yeah, one of the things we see really, I guess overwhelming the pattern, overwhelmingly the pattern is 
um, that most people see, the great majority of people see, the greater diversification of um, Northwest Arkansas as a community, and in particular the, the workforce, the labor force, as a good thing or something that doesn't make much, dif much difference, not something that's a net negative for the community. And that's a good baseline result for us to work from. Okay, all right, and it is election year, election day tomorrow. Several issues uh, that did make it to the ballot, the photo mm -hmm. ID, um, uh, raising minimum wage, building casinos. Uh, I was curious to see why you didn't have the casino question uh, in your polling. Any reason why? There are a couple of reasons. We, we really can't ever do them all. I don't think we have in many years. It just takes too much time uh, to do all of them, right, if three to four or five have qualified. It's also the case that I've learned over the years that the ballot measures in particular are just really complicated to try to capture over the phone in a way people can hear it and respond to. Um, just straight up, but also in a way that's at all parallel to what they're going to find on their ballots. That experience seems really different. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just tend not to get good results on those. And I just, that was a really complicated one that I didn't think I was going to be able to summarize in a way that would give us data that were at all useful to us. Right. So I skipped that one this year. I actually was on there with term limits when the Supreme Court took it <laughs> off. So. Right. Um, I, I know there are some backers of that were, that were disappointed, but I was also out there with an experiment. Yeah. It also got wrecked. Yeah. Um, but we did find strong support for the, the two that we tested and that remain on the ballot. Yeah, kind of a risk you take when you survey those two questions and they get uh, thrown out and don't make it to the ballot. So <laughs> you feel right. like you've wasted your time. And, right. um, you know, only the governor is up for re-election, but what do we think about Governor Hutchinson and mm -hmm. President Trump and our two senators, Cotton and Bozeman? Yeah, so once again, um, uh, Arkansas's governor has strong approval ratings, really and uh, if you're a Washington, D.C. figure, Arkansas or otherwise. Governors in general tend to have stronger approval ratings than politicians at other levels. I guess that's why people call it the best job in politics. Mm -hmm. uh, so Hutchinson's no exception. Uh, he's easily into the 60s uh, among very likely voters and his approval ratings. Um, and then President Trump was at about at 53%, so Arkansas actually looks a lot like the nation uh, in that regard. Our two U.S. senators are somewhat lower in the mid to upper 40s, but that's not atypical for this climate. We've been seeing that for quite some time. All right, that's probably about where they've been last mm -hmm. year as well, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we'll leave it there with Dr. Janine Perry. She's a political science professor at the University of Arkansas. And again, you said you could find all the Arkansas poll results housed on a website. Where would we find yeah. that? The easiest thing is just to Google the Arkansas poll in quotes, right. and um, you can find everything you want, how we ask the questions, past findings, and eventually we put our full data sets on there if you want to be a super nerd. All right, very good. And a plug for Google at that, too. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. All right, we appreciate you tuning in. I'm Paul Gatling. We'll see you next time. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me.